Ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for your attention. Today I would like to discuss the modern development in one-stop treatment of neck ulcers. As you probably know, the number of patients with heart-to-heal wounds is increasing worldwide due to aging, lifestyle like smoking, obesity, and diseases like diabetes mellitus. And it's hard to have a wound that is not healing. Uh, it's painful, it smells, it leads to social isolation, and for the society it costs a lot of money. For instance, in the Netherlands, in the last few years we have spent more money on closing wounds as compared to cancer care. So, in our opinion, things really have to change to reduce the impact uh, that wounds have on our patients and on our society. And in my opinion, some things we can change quite easily, I think. For instance, like this. This is what I call old school surgery in wound care. A patient is referred to the hospital with an uh, ulcer at his toe, and uh, the toe uh, looks terrible, and it's amputated by a general surgeon. And the wound was uh, with this patient because of diabetes, mellitus, and peripheral arterial disease. So the interventional radiologist performs an angioplasty of the infrapropital arteries a few days later. The patient goes back to the outpatient clinic, but unfortunately the wound is not healing, so he needs further amputations and again angioplasties because of reocclusion of the infrapropital arteries. And this goes on and on and on, and after almost two years, followed by re-ulceration, recurrent pain, inability to walk, infection, etc., etc., finally the wound is healed, but the patient has lost all his toes. And the funny thing, well, it's not really funny, but the problem is that at the end, in medical literature, we call this limb salvage. And I think this is, this is at the end, a terrible way to treat our patient. But not in, only in the hospital things go wrong. I think that there are major wound care issues in the Netherlands where there are so many professionals who try to heal wounds, but they only know what they know best and do what they know best. So the patient is going from island to island, but there's, no one, there's not a team that helps this patient to heal his wounds. So in order to change this, we, uh, oh, unfortunately, um, these major wound care issues in the Netherlands, they lead to an increase in heart to heal wounds. They lead to recurrent ulcers. And as I mentioned before, it costs as much as cancer care. And to change this, we developed a working group on wound care in the Netherlands. So it's a national wide uh, working group. And we defined a quality of care standard on how to treat patients with heart to heal wounds in the Netherlands. You can read about this standard and you can see a video on Vimeo. Unfortunately, it's in Dutch, but we uh, will uh, translate it to English very soon. And within this quality of care standard of wound care, we, uh, we mention how patients with heart to wounds should be treated on primary care, but also within the hospital. We developed a new classification of wound treatment where we uh, define urgent or non-urgent treatment and basic care versus complex care. So for instance, a class one wound is a non-urgent basic care wound. For instance, that's a venous ulcer where it's nicely healing with the help of the primary care doctor. But if after three weeks, the tendency of healing is not as expected, the patient should be referred to a expert team and then becomes a class three wound. So what do we expect from basic wound care? We expect that the family doctor is in charge, that he uses this classification of wound treatment. He defines a preliminary, preliminary diagnosis why the wound is not healing, define treatment, but most importantly, he has to analyze and follow up wounds in a way that's reproducible. So making photos that we can analyze and see whether there really is a tendency of healing. As I mentioned, if after three weeks the tendency is of healing is not as expected, the patient has to be referred to an expert team. It's like a safety net for the patient. And the expert team is a team of professional wound care providers from primary care, but also from the hospital, doctors and nurses. And we mentioned in this quality of care standard that every region in the Netherlands can further define in detail who is actually a member of this expert team. 
And the most important task of these wound expert teams is to diagnose why the wound is still not healing after three weeks. Of course, they have the opportunity to, to perform extensive treatment and further analysis, but they also have to prepare a regional quality of care document and they have to implement the standard of care as we have developed nationwide. Because there are so many doctors and nurse practitioners and other care providers that are involved in trying to heal these wounds, that we decided there should be one coordinator practitioner. That's a relatively new term, but there should be one person, a doctor or a nurse practitioner who is in the lead. And this person has to make sure that there's an adequate analysis of the underlying diseases, lifestyle effects, integrates all the other caregivers, uh, appoint the case manager, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. In our own hospitals, we have developed weekly wound meetings where the dermatologist, the plastic surgeon, the general vascular surgeon, but also the podiatrist, the wound nurse, etc. They all we come all together to discuss why some wounds are not healing. But to use the words of Albert Einstein, I think we have to do more to heal wounds faster because we cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we used when we created them. So in our hospital, we have developed this holistic one-stop shop surgery. Holistic means that we try to treat every aspect that may decrease, reduce wound healing. That means if we made protocols of local wound care, for within the hospital, but we made sure that the same protocols are used in the home care. So there's no difference between local wound care in the hospital or at home. We have a smoking cessation outpatient clinic. We look at dietary intake. Of course, we also look at offloading and adequate regulation of diabetes. So in my opinion, doing a vascular or plastic surgery is, is, is hopeless if these things are not addressed in the right way. Since 2016, we have a hybrid OR. And in this hybrid OR, we can combine a lot of types of surgery with one goal. We want the patient with the wound to leave the theater with a bleeding or a closed wound. That means that in this OR, we can do diagnostic angiography. We can do all kinds of endovascular treatments like PTAs of the infrapetal arteries. We can do old fashioned bypass surgery debridement, small amputations, pit wind grafts, etc. The main goal is to get the patients out of the theater with a bleeding or closed wound, and when possible, just in one surgery. We also try to look at vascular surgery in a little bit different way than we used to. Here you see a patient with an ulcer at the Achilles tendon, and on the right side you see his angiography, and you see that the anterior tibial artery is open, there's blood on the uh, in the foot, probably you can feel pulsations at the ankle. So for most vascular surgeons, this patient would not have critical limb ischemia. But in our opinion, as you can see, the posterior tibial artery is occluded. And that's the artery that has to bring blood to this ulcer at the Achilles tendon. So although this patient may not have critical limb ischemia in the way we defined Previously, as vascular surgeons, in my opinion, this patient does have critical wound ischemia and deserves a revascularization of the posterior tibial artery. As I mentioned, uh, within this, uh, the OR, we try to combine different treatments, so not only revascularizations, but we do also small orthopedic surgeries, specific skin grafting. But on the right side, you see another problem that we have to attack. Here you see a large ulcer at the heel, after a revascularization, after a spit skin graft of the foot. And when we debride this heel, uh, the patient will have a large new ulcer. And, and within our team, we have discussed many times what to do. The funny thing is that in trauma patients, we know exactly what to do. We know that early closure by a plastic surgeon uh, reduces the risk of infection. Uh, it will increase healing of the bone and leads to a functional, more, a better leg. So we have discussed within our wound team whether we should do the same, for instance, with our diabetic patients. And uh, the patients I discussed with you, here you see a free flap uh, reconstruction by the plastic surgeon to heal quickly this large heel ulcer. 
Unfortunately, uh, diabetic patients, wound care patients are not the same as the quite relatively healthy trauma patients. They smoke, they've got vascular disease, they've got food deformities, and they've got serious comorbidities like cardiac failure or end-stage pulmonary disease. So within our team, we're still discussing, does every diabetic patient need this kind of plastic surgery, and what are the long-term results? Well, I cannot discuss with you the long-term results, but at the end, uh, since 2015, we start to work in our team, as I mentioned during this talk, and quite interesting, we see that the risk for major amputation in diabetic patients with ischemic ulcers is very low compared to international studies. The risk for major amputation in diabetic patients is almost 54%. Uh, in, 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 in international literature, while it's only 18% in our hospitals. And over the last few years, you can see on the right side, we've seen more patients with peripheral vascular disease. We perform much more revascularizations every year, but we see a tendency in a decrease in major amputations. The interesting thing is that all these things I mentioned during this talk are not new for most of you. So I think that the most important lesson is that reorganizing wound care may be the most efficient way to reduce the burden of hard to heal wounds. Thank you for your attention.